This is Twit. The, the, the AI data centers are distorting. Now, Richard, you're going to have to explain this because you're the, you're the autodidact. They're distorting the normal flow of electricity. And so there's a map that says that shows you where there is brownouts in effect from these AIs, which cause damage to home appliances, especially in areas like Chicago and Dater Center Alley in Nova, North Virginia, where distorted power readings are way above normal. And it, the, the problem here, and, it, and it, it'll get resolved, is that the data centers aren't reporting their consumption dynamically back to the power system because their consumption levels are hard to measure. They're not like regular humans. They well, and also we have a dumb grid, right? They, they've talked for years about making a smart grid. The grid's getting smarter, but major power consumers like uh, an aluminum smelter is a great example of this, massive consumer of electricity. And they actually converse with the power company before they crank up the inductors for exactly that reason. It's hundreds of megawatts and you'll knock the grid over. Yeah. And here you've got these data centers in neighborhoods and their consumption behavior is unusual. It's it's kind of symmetrical, but it does has its own peaks. If it was the same all the time, it wouldn't be a problem, but it's not. And it doesn't follow the normal shape of humans, which is you know more power consumed during the day, less at night. And so the impact on the grid is that it sags the cycle rate. Normally we're running at 60 hertz. So when you overload the grid before it actually trips, it'll drop down to 59. You know, 59 is actually a disaster. 59, you know, 59.6 is bad enough. And that can damage certain coils and certain uh, It also appliances. gives you a good excuse for being late for work if you have an older electric clock because <laughs> the older electric clocks used the 60 hertz per second for their timing. And if it's off, the clocks get off. I think modern clocks are a little bit more sophisticated than that, but... I have an yeah. IoT device that can help for protecting your your home appliances and could report your fluctuations back if you would like. This comes from a company called Whisker Labs. They have sensors. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the ding. Yeah. So th so they have. So you were a data source in this, Stacy. Probably. <laughs> I, I was a hundred. Well, my power doesn't go out, but for this, but yeah. Doesn't have to go out. It's it, that's the thing. It's it. it you know, my, we're used to brownouts or blackouts, stable. but bad harmonics may may not be visible to you until your refrigerator fries. It is visible to me because I have a ting. They alert me. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so you have one of these whisker devices on your. Uh, uh huh. It's a ting. Um, you're. We've talked about it on prior shows. It's uh, it's called Ting. It, you plug it in. It's fifty dollars a year, or <laughs> if you have certain insurance companies, they actually pay for it because it's designed to detect. Oh, they say faults. it's for electrical fires. They yeah, they they, they detect, but they also can detect problems with your power coming into your house, yeah. not just what it detects issues with your power throughout your house and coming into your house. And since I do my own wiring, I oh like God. Well, <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> not that kind of wiring. I have an electrician if I'm going to like. Oh, okay. You know, swap out my electrical <laughs> panel. But like, I have this vision of I, you walking around in rubber boots. <laughs> no, with, just with like my, when I'm replacing like light switches and yeah, and yeah. No, you're always and, doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamps. So the ting does the ting. Uh, so I'm looking for something central. Is there something you could put centrally on your? Um, a system that would then monitor the whole system, or does this have to go in each outlet? No, no, Ting just goes, it just sits on one, one outlet, outlet in your home. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's cool. It's just tracking it, though. It will let you know if there's an issue, but it doesn't stop anything. It's not like a breaker. Yeah, but it'll right? let you know. That's the point. It lets you know. It's yeah. like, hey, by the way, your power is really yucky. It's 100 bucks. Um, oh, it's $100 now. Yeah, well, and it, well, it comes with something called a fire prevention service. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's if they detect problems, they actually oh, they call pay you. for you to, they call you and pay for an electrician to come out. Oh, nice. So, All right, I'm going to buy one. 100 bucks not have to have one. a fire. Sounds good. It's one kind of fire. Don't worry, there's other fires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, just so you know, like, oh, don't like. You may still you, have a fire. You mean I, I shouldn't have candles on my Christmas tree? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was like, your Christmas okay. tree, if it's still there, probably will go up. Probably time to get cooking. rid of it. Cooking with grease. <laughs> Clean your grease yeah, traps. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that was one of my uh, Instagram purchases during the break. I bought a, f a blanket that you throw over your grease fire. Fireman Dan recommended it, so I thought, well, I can't. That's got to be good. <laughs> Do you clean your grease traps? 
Because that's a way What's a more, grease trap? I mean, we don't have those things that are, you know, those. Okay, you do know. Never mind. I'm teasing. Uh, anyway, so yeah. The, so, but you think, Richard, that this is a, a short-term problem, that we're going to fix this. Yeah, I think what you're going to see is a mandate now for, for these um, data centers to start reporting their intended consumption in real time back to the power grid. And I lots that's of real issue. Lots of new data centers going online. Well, Ports it's, uh, had it's a about report. to only get weirder, Leo, because now this is where you get why is Microsoft leasing Three Mile Island Reactor One, right. and and right. Amazon is talking to New Scale, and like being, what's really happening is the tech giants just are going to put their own power on, and are very likely going to make excess they're going to sell back to the grid. Ah, well, they've already spent in the, between January and August of 2024. Microsoft, Meta, Google, and Amazon spent $125 billion on AI data centers, according to JP Morgan. And that's probably just the tip of the iceberg, right? That's just those four. Um, and I'm sure there'll be lots more uh, to come. And let's hope they're building them uh, with appropriate harmonic controls. <laughs> something reporting they've with fire blankets i don't know something they need something maybe they should have a ting in every one of them well i'm sure they do quality of their power is very important which is one right. of the reasons they're stressing the harmonics of the rest of the grid right so is it's a reporting issue or is it a filtering issue no i suspect this is an if you can warn the grid that you're about to increase yeah. consumption you know what your real-time consumption is the grid can can respond right but like i said it's no this is a normal industrial problem major power consumers re normally report into the grid when they're going to increase their demand meaningfully. And the idea that we now have enough data centers that run in the megawatt class, like they, they should qualify, right. should be getting into that reporting mechanism. So that, that will come. But again, it's like the relationship between the tech giants and the power industry is about to get really convoluted if they start producing their own power as well. Yeah, I know our local power company, which is uh, not government run as a private business government regulated private business uh, pacific gas and electric doesn't like us they they forbade us from putting too many solar panels they didn't want us to compete with them <laughs> they, you can only put enough solar panels on your roof to to accommodate your own projected needs you couldn't you couldn't put more power back into the grid this is which an is issue that's even bigger in, in australia and it's got more to do with destabilizing the grid right you, oh really power, it's not about money no, the power power doesn't flow symmetrically. It can't go back up the transformer the same way it came down. And so what does happen when there's so much residential solar and, and in places like Sydney, they're close to 25%, uh, they'll actually blow um, transformers off the poles. Because they're putting too much is power that, back that, in? Is right. that the jump down from yeah. like voltage? Yeah. And so uh, now the requirement in New South Wales, which is where this region has the largest problems, is that you can only put solar on if the power company has the option to disconnect you on demand. Oh, so interesting. if they're having grid de destabilization, they just pop you off the feedback loop. Right. So they, they stop that problem. Oh, see, and I thought it was just a greedy corporation trying to keep us from competing with them. Uh. Well, there are ways to, aren't there? I mean, there's technologies that we're not investing in that can allow for that two-way flow if we decide we want it. We True. just, that requires billion, I mean, that requires upgrading the distribution grid all the way down to like transformers all the way back to like the big, I don't know what they're called in the power world. I think of them as. I seamless. bet Richard does. <laughs> <laughs> it looks Your static transformer elastic. is like a D slam. What is the big yeah. like station that you see that would be like a C lec? <laughs> yeah, it's ba it's basically along the same line. It's there's this idea of doing community electricity. So in natively those power those panels aren't putting out good house power anyway. They have to step down. And so if oh, you could feed them into a community management tool so they right. could be pushed onto the grid and can be pushed to any of the houses and then are stepped down at point of use, uh, you get a lot more flexibility. So community power source is a really interesting idea because now you can, build a re you can build a reasonable size wind turbine in that mix as well or two. And you would have mix. batteries and power conditioning. Conditioner, yeah, primarily for conditioning, but yeah. just for stability's sake. But it's just, you know, that the solar on that roof was is a real easy solve, especially a place in California to get you off the grid. It's not a good way to support the grid. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't what even you know do? that you were an expert on this, Richard, but I knew that you would know. I well, knew that you would know. You know I've Richard's done this the guy you go to, whatever the question is. He's our local AI, basically. 
This is just a set of talks that I've done on energy. For, I know for you're years an now. Yeah. And so yeah. I specifically did a study for New South Wales and we went over oh. all the power production in New South Wales. And that's why I was completely up to speed on how they're oh, compensating for the solar utilization. Interesting. Uh, they've now There's asked so me to do Victoria as well. So now I'm going to do the state of Victoria next uh, this spring. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.